The Habitat Introduction Some organisms like lotus, water hyacinth and fish live in pond, that is water. Plants like cacti and animals like a camel can live in dry conditions, in deserts. Still other organisms live in a forest or in soil or in burrows. The places where living beings live is called their habitat. Habitat A pond is a habitat. Similarly, a forest is another habitat. The bodies of animals are specially designed or made to help them live in their own habitat. Plants too live in specific habitats. Cacti live in the hot, dry desert because these plants have fleshy stems for storing any rainwater that falls. Buttercups like to grow in damp, grassy fields where they can get plenty of the sun. Ferns and mosses can be spotted in moist, shady habitats. Some plants, like lotus, grow in water. Plant Habitats Types of plants on the basis of habitat. Hydrophytes Living in water, like lotus, water lily, water hyacinth, water chestnut, singhara, aquatic plants. Mesophytes Living on land with sufficient water, like most herbs and trees. Terrestrial plants Xerophytes Living on land, in dry climate, having scarcity of water, as in a desert, like cacti, babul and bear. Animal Habitats Aquatic, living in water like the fish. Terrestrial, living on land like cow, horse, elephant, lion. Amphibious, living both on land and in water as a frog, toad. Arboreal, living on trees like squirrels, monkeys, etc. Components of habitat In a habitat, two types of components occur. These, as you noticed in tables, are living components, also called biotic components, and non-living component or abiotic component. Biotic component Producers Green plants make their own food from carbon dioxide and water using the energy of sunlight. The green chlorophyll in the leaves captures the energy of sunlight. This process of making food is called photosynthesis. During this process, oxygen is given out into the atmosphere. Organisms that can make their own food are called producers. They are also called autotrophs, auto meaning self and troph meaning food. Plants depend on animals. Some animals, such as the butterfly, honeybee, hummingbird, bat or moth, help to pollinate flowers. Without pollination, flowering plants cannot form seeds and hence cannot reproduce. Animals also help in dispersal of seeds. Several seeds or fruits have hair or spines on them. These stick to the animal's skin or fur and are carried to long distances. Animal excreta and their dead bodies add nutrients to the soil. They act as manure and provide minerals for plant growth. Abiotic components All living organisms take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide all the time. Oxygen is used up and carbon dioxide is given out during burning. However, the composition of air still remains more or less constant. This happens because green plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen during photosynthesis. Thus, a balance is maintained between carbon dioxide and oxygen in the air. Today we are burning much more fuel in cars, powerhouses and factories than we did a hundred years ago. We have also cut down a large number of trees. This has upset the balance between carbon dioxide and oxygen in the air. Today, there is more carbon dioxide in the air than there was a hundred years ago. 
hydrophytes. Hydrophytes, meaning water plants, are plants that grow in excessively wet conditions or completely in water. Though there are several types of hydrophytes, two common types are submerged plants, those living completely underwater like hydrilla and valisneria, and floating plants, those living or floating on the surface of water or slightly below it like the water hyacinth, iconia, water lily and lotus. These plants show adaptations in their roots, stems and leaves. Roots. Roots and root hairs are poorly developed as water is not a problem. Stem. Stem is thin and flexible so that it can sway or bend along with the water movement and pressure. Leaves in submerged plants like hydrilla are long and thin so that the strong water currents are not able to tear them apart. Xerophytes. Plants living in dry conditions or water-scarce habitats such as deserts are called xerophytes. The conditions prevailing in water-scarce habitats are called xeric and most plants cannot live in such conditions. Some plants like cacti have become adapted to such dryness. These plants like hydrophytes show adaptations in their roots, stems and leaves. Roots. Roots are very long so that water from deep layers of the soil can be absorbed. Stem. Stem becomes spongy so as to store water. It becomes green and takes over the functions of leaves. Thick waxy coating develops to prevent the loss of water because of intense heat. Leaves. Leaves are reduced to spines in order to reduce the loss of water from the surface of leaves. To show that soil has air in it. Take some dry soil in a glass bottle. Add some water to it and stir. Can you see bubbles of air coming out of the soil? These are bubbles of air which are present between the spaces in the soil particles. Aquatic animals The animals like fish have streamlined body. Such a body reduces friction and helps in swimming. Fins in fish helps in swimming. To prevent rotting and decay, the animals develop special coverings like scales, waxy coating, etc. Special breathing organs like the gills in fish are present. Adaptation of birds Bones are hollow and filled with air cavities to make the body light. Feathers are present. Forelimbs are modified into wings for flying. Desert animals in animals like snakes and lizards, which live in hot places, water loss from the body is prevented as these animals have thick skin. Adaptations in desert animals have developed to help them to withstand severe heat and scarcity of water. Camels have adapted and developed mechanisms to live in hot weather. Adaptations of Camel its feet have thick, large soles, making it suitable for walking on sand. When water is available, the animal can drink a large quantity of water. A camel can go on without food or water at a stretch for as many as 10 days. It passes out very little urine when water is not available. It is capable of adjusting its body temperature to that of the surrounding desert habitat and thereby the water loss by perspiration and other means is drastically minimized. Adaptations in cold places Animals like penguins and polar bears live in very cold places. These animals show thick skins or have a thick fur to protect them from cold. Biotic and abiotic components Cycling of nutrients or minerals takes place from the biotic to abiotic components and vice versa. This cycling of materials is made possible through the activity of microorganisms act as decomposers of dead and decaying matter. The simpler substances so produced are taken up 
by the green plants through the soil as well as the air. The food produced by green plants enters into a food chain. In a food chain, plants are eaten up by animals, thus making animal life possible.